I've been meaning to talk about this for a few days, but other stuff's come up, but I've got the time to talk about it now, so I'm going to. I saw some reports last week where New Japan is disappointed in their relatively soft ticket sales for their upcoming G1 special at the Cow Palace in San Francisco on Saturday, July 7th. With an event where you have about 10,000 tickets or so available, they only sold 3,300 or so in the initial offering, and there are still thousands of tickets available. So what exactly does that mean for New Japan and running shows in the U.S. and so on and so forth? Uh, probably a couple of things. Number one is one of the real challenges for these wrestling promotions as they look to get a stronger foothold in the U.S. marketplace, maybe perhaps compete a little bit, just a little bit with WWE, is you have to be careful how many big events you run because you are dealing with wrestling fans who only have so much disposable income. And I don't think it's overreaction to say that coming off of the Strong Style Evolve show that happened out again out in California in Long Beach, wasn't it, at the end of March, then WrestleMania soon after, you've got that all-in show that's going to happen in September in the Chicago area, and then you've got that Jericho cruise coming up later this year. You have hardcore wrestling fans with only a certain set amount of disposable income that are really going to be strapped financially to be able to go to all of these shows and all of these events. It's just a sheer matter of economics that it's going to be tough for these fans to sit there and go to every single one of these things like they may want to or they may desire to. Number two, there's one thing when you run a show like once a year. You know, for New Japan, when they do the G1 specials last year, you know, they go to the U.S. for the first time or whatever it was. That's a big deal. It's a special attraction. It's something new. It's something fresh. And similarly, March, I mean, that's the first time in 2018. But now you're talking about New Japan is running multiple shows stateside in 2018 with the show in March, with the show in July. Then I think they have that show in Daytona Beach, uh, that CEO times New Japan show on June 29th. Um, now you're running multiple events. So the challenge is, is trying to make it as appealing when there's maybe not quite the same level of freshness or newness. Then you also have to be concerned a little bit with the fact that you're still relatively new in the marketplace and you're trying to run massive venues. You could talk about market size and the places you're going and hoping that you can stumble into X number of fans. But even in a place like the San Francisco area, you might only have so many people that are actually familiar with New Japan only have so many people that actually care about New Japan, even know about it, like it, and then on top of that, you might only have X number of people in the San Francisco area that want to go to a show, let alone, God knows they're living in California, specifically in the San Francisco area, being able to actually afford the show. And talking about these people that are New Japan fans throughout, let's say, the U.S., coming off the heels very likely of either A, going to the Strong Style Evo, all the show or B even more likely forking over big money to go to WrestleMania going all the way back out to California in July could be a bit of a financial stretch then where on the one hand it makes sense for New Japan maybe from a geographical and logistical standpoint to start off in California as their initial offering and creating a footprint here in the US. I know they've got the Daytona Beach uh, CEO Times New Japan show at the end of June, but primarily it's California based shows. The challenge is by having them on the left coast, the west coast, is that it can make it really challenging for anybody east of the Mississippi specifically to be able to go, because that's quite a haul to come all the way like I'm here in uh, the DMV area, DC, Maryland, Virginia. I'm in Richmond, Virginia. 
if I was somebody that actually loved New Japan enough to want to go to that show, that's requiring a 3,000 mile flight each way, having to book hotels and do all these other things, and that can get relatively timely and expensive. So while it makes sense initially to try and drop off there in California and then expend outwards, it might be a better idea for New Japan to better space out their shows and get closer to other areas of fans because now you're going into the same type of area, you're drawing from the same type of pool, and I don't believe New Japan has nearly, and I mean nearly enough, big star name recognition where they can just plump a, plop a couple of names on the marquee instantly and sell out the event, nor do they have the brand identity or recognition or familiarity to be able to just solely market the brand and sell out the event. They just don't. They could get there someday, but they're not there, especially for a venue the size of the Cow Palace. But I think the biggest issue of all, and, and, I, and I have to question New Japan's strategy here, is you're concerned about soft ticket sales, but you haven't announced who's going to wrestle, what the matches are going to be, what the card's going to be like, none of that. You are not WWE. And I do not say that to praise WWE. I say this as a matter of comparison. WWE says, hey, we're having WrestleMania here. It is WrestleMania. The matches themselves and frankly the talents themselves are no longer the draw because WWE has transitioned into being a brand-based product. It's about the shield, the name, not the stars. So they can just throw out their WrestleMania, it doesn't really matter, and eventually the event is going to sell out and people are going to come from all over the world to it. But that is the WWE. They have a strategic hold, foothold on the U.S. marketplace. They are still dominant here significantly in the U.S. marketplace in terms of professional wrestling. New Japan can't do that crap. For New Japan to sit there and announce a show like this months out, and not bother to announce what's going to happen, who's going to be on the show, is sloppy and frankly irresponsible. Usually I don't see them being that bad about that. Usually they will, at least based off of my observations, announce matches, announce the stars that are going to appear ahead of time. Would seem to be a good idea. And they haven't done any of that. So, in spite of all the other factors I've talked about, and I feel like you could look at a variety of them and say, hey, there's a little bit of concern here. You're getting ambitious trying to now run a much larger venue than you have, what was it, the, that pyramid place in Long Beach? I don't think that held 10,000 people or nearly anywhere close to it. It's a lot easier when you're appealing to a hardcore audience and you're only trying to sell maybe two to 4,000 tickets. Well, you look based off of the initial offering of what you had. I think that the one, last one in Long Beach, maybe it was four to 5,000 people. Yeah, you could sell that out a lot quicker. You could sell that out within minutes because that's the size of the demographic you're really appealing to. Now you're trying to double that in a few months and you're not bothering to announce who's going to wrestle. You haven't, as of my knowledge at this point, uh, even announced one official match for the show or the concept for the show or anything maybe that brand recognition could work in Japan but it's not gonna work here in the US at this point in time and frankly I don't know if it ever will I was really dumb on New Japan's part and even if you are a raging New Japan mark it is okay and I emphasize this again, it almost sounds like freaking therapy. It is okay to admit when they do something stupid. And in this particular case, trying to run a show in a 10,000 seat venue and not bothering to announce who's going to wrestle, what the matches are, who's going to appear, is stupid. Absolutely stupid. I, I just, for the life of me, can't understand what the thought process was. Like I look at that all-in show that they're going to do at the was at the Sears Center in uh, Hoffman Estates with Cody and the Young Bucks. I imagine that show is going to do a better job of selling tickets because they've done a better job 
of promoting the event. Now it's a lot easier to do that when you're only promoting one event. It is also a lot easier when you were Cody and you were the Bucks and you're on the hook financially for the event, then by God, you are going to care about it and you're going to make sure you do everything you can to effectively advertise, market, and promote the damn thing. Because if you don't, you're going to look like clowns and idiots. And to me, New Japan, with only running still a couple of shows in the U.S. in 2018, should be taking a similar mindset. You are coming to the U.S. for a reason. You have to step up your game. You have to change the way you maybe do things. And that's okay. But what won't be okay is if you don't ultimately sell out this Cow Palace show, but Cody and the Bucks of Suck sell out their all-in event before the event actually even happens. To me, that would be embarrassing. To me, that would be an indication of as much as people love New Japan, uh, they're not all the way there. And they've got some flaws in the way they conduct business and they do things. You'll never hear Meltzer talk about that, of course. That freaking cuck. That unofficially paid hand. But yeah, very simply. As of now, you do not have the brand recognition to be able to just say, hey, we're running a show here, come buy tickets. You have to market your matches, you have to market your performers, and New Japan has failed to do either one of those. So as a result, they have absolutely nobody to blame but themselves, and there's no excuse, it's unacceptable, and they need to fix it, and I'm sure ultimately they will, and they probably will still get pretty close to a sellout, if not a sellout, and even if they only sold out 80% of the venue, 8,000 tickets is still pretty good work. I mean, so it's not all doom and gloom here. But if you're going to run a 10,000 seat venue, you are anticipating being able to sell 10,000 tickets. New Japan needs to get on the foot and do the right thing to make sure that they can do that going forward. Because I can only assume there's going to be more shows. I might suggest starting to hit other marketplaces such as Chicago, such as other places maybe on the East Coast, going where other fans might be. Uh, maybe running some smaller venues for the time being um, and actually bothering to announce who's going to appear and what matches you will have. Just a thought might seem like a good start because what you're doing here with that G1 show is not smart business.